Hello. I'm not a fan of Tommy Robinson in any way. I've never been a fan of Tommy, Ro Tommy Robinson. And I know people who know him. And I, and I always mean to talk to them about what exactly Tommy Robinson stands for in the same way as I always mean to talk to uh, people that I know about, um, oh, those two brothers in Romania, Tate, the Tate brothers. Because I don't feel I understand what the big issues are, number one, and number two, more importantly, what the attraction is. I don't get it. Um, but because I don't get it, I'm not a fan. And I, 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 I'm not a fan of the anti-monarchists um, who were arrested at the coronation under this whipped-up aggressive law that gives more power to police to arrest people on suspicion of, on thought crime, really, rather than on actions. And, and this is the problem. I was looking at footage uh, from Mayatusi's channel uh, he's got a very, very good piece about Tommy Robinson uh, with plenty of footage. And go along to his channel, have a look at it, because it's uh, it's all there. And the actual arrest yesterday of Tommy Robinson at the anti-Semitism march is shocking in the extreme. And it's shocking f on a number of levels. The first level is uh, simply the fact that he is targeted and pulled out of the crowd and arrested in the doorway of a cafe. Uh, and there is no evidence that he has done anything to whip up aggression or that he's causing any offence. He's arrested because he hasn't taken a piece of paper and because he hasn't moved. It's, it, it's a technicality. He's arrested on a technicality. But it's it's presented in such a way, and this is really the second issue, it's presented in such a way that he cannot accept that piece of paper without compromising his own security. And the number of police detailed to effect his arrest is shameful. Now, it may well be, as in the issue with the Cenotaph, again, there's uh, footage, very good footage, that shows that he was as meek as a lamb, that he did nothing wrong. Now, what he may have done... What, what what level of whipping up his supporters um, on social media or by telephone that may have happened, that's for the police to prove elsewhere. But there is no evidence that at the Cenotaph, or indeed at the march yesterday, he was a figure who was causing a problem, causing a fray. Uh, he wasn't. Demonstrably, he wasn't. And... And this is the problem with the policing. The police are are trying to engineer a situation where somebody is arrested. And so the Tommy Robinson supporters would say that the police are um, uh, there's a two tier policing. There's one form of policing for the pro Palestinian marchers, and there's another form of policing for the anti Semitism marchers and for those people protecting the cenotaph. I, I've, never, I've never heard of the cenotaph needing protecting before. Um, but uh, that's another matter. And I'm not, I'm not really getting on that bandwagon um, because I don't think it's necessary and I think it's a distraction. The real issue is the use of fake law, uh, laws which are being concocted, whether they've gone through Parliament or not, they are still effectively fake laws targeted at individuals and uh, and, and specific specific uh, groups. And either the law is blind, or the law is is um, biased, blind or biased, and that's the issue. And this, I think, is an example in practice of very biased law keeping and if we pervert the law in order to take down people we don't like we are damaging the law and i i started this video by saying that i i don't um i i'm I, i'm not a fan of tommy robinson i don't like tommy robinson but i would not 
want to use the law, I would not want to pervert the law, as Suella Bravman and her cronies have done, and maybe Sadiq Khan has done. That's, that, that's the allegation made effectively in the video by Tommy Robinson himself, that the law has been perverted in order to get him. And I think there's some... I, I think that's a credible case. I don't, I don't think this is about a two-tier legal system or two-tier policing. I think that's a distraction. I think there's very good reasons why uh, the police are being cautious about the policing of these large marches. But a targeted takedown in this way is uh, and 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 a um, and and a fictitious crime, a concocted crime. So Tommy Robinson's offence seems to have been that he wouldn't provide his address on camera. Absolutely reasonable. Uh, he was reluctant to provide his real name. He did, in the end. And then the police went through this farce, this fictional farce, of trying to find out whether it was spelt with a PH. Absurd! Absurd! They've got his name written down on all their paperwork. That is why they were there. They were targeted. This was a targeted arrest. And to pretend that there's some sort of um, so, so, some sort of ignorance of who this person is at the point at the point when you're offering him when when, when you're giving him a dismissal uh, a dispersal notice is nonsensical, utterly nonsensical. And we go back to a wonderful scene, if I can remember it all, um, in a play called A Man for All Seasons about Thomas More, this amazing character uh, who formed. Um, one that were the, the subject of Shakespeare's last play, I suppose, um, the, the play that he penned with other people and the play uh, where he wrote a speech, The Stranger's Speech, which is the only speech recorded in Shakespeare's handwriting uh, that's in the National Library. And it's it's a very powerful speech about the... Uh, about quelling a riot, and that riot was because uh, the people in what is now Trafalgar Square were objecting to migrants taking their jobs. And in the play A Man for All Season, so, uh, the, uh, the anti-hero William Roper is saying, uh, so, so, so you give the devil the benefit of the law, and Thomas More says, yes, what would you do? What would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get to the devil? Yes, I'd cut down every law in England to do that. Oh! And when the last law was down and the devil turned round on you, where would you hide, Roper? The law's all being flat. This country is planted thick with laws from coast to coast. Man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down, and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that were blow then? Yes, I'd give the devil the benefit of the law for my own safety's sake. You cut down the law and you destroy everything that protects us. You cut down the law just to get to Tommy Robinson. You cut down the law just to get to the people you don't like. No, you use the law. And you make sure the law is impartial, that the law is blind, that the law is not biased. The moment you target the law to make things easy, to get an easy win, you destroy the law. And that is what I see in the Tommy Robinson arrest. And that frightens me.